Welcome everyone, today we have a new build guide for Diablo 4 with Barbarians for the endgame. Now this particular build, as you can see in the background of the replays, I have a number of gears and also different aspects and also different legendaries and some uniques to be crafted and also used onto this particular Barbarian build. So this will be our all-in-one Barbarian build, which allows you to do tons of damage, which allows you to push for higher with Avatar of the with higher tier dungeons, and also allows you to adjust for party play and also solo play, for boss slaying, for super tank, and also for dealing a lot of damage. So we have a variety of adjustments, which I'll go through with you guys in this video. And as you can see in the replay, I'm constantly changing gears to give you guys a demonstration of the number of combinations you can have using different amulets, using different rings, using even different boots, and also other gears to deal the most damage and also to keep yourself survivable. Because you'll be very important to deal enough damage in 10 minutes with a new content, you also want to survive, so you need to do both. And also adjusting for dealing more damage in a group we'll be doing shouts and also we'll be doing tons of you know, overpower damage, which is going to be very fun for this build. So instead of showing you guys the entire seven minutes of the replay, I'll have the replay available for you guys, and you can see that I'm constantly swapping gears. And in this video, we'll focus on when to swap what gears and also when to get the most out of your build. Notice here I have swapped into my boss slaying or you know, end game amulet, just so I can do overpower damage with guaranteed hit to kill the boss. Now this can also be done in the Avatar of Zaire. Before the, you know, the vampires are summoned, you can do the similar method. And once I stack to 300 Fury Spin, I can dash into the monster and one-shot the boss, or one-shot the vampires that will be summoned. Now one of the biggest questions I'm sure you guys have is how do you do over 100, you know, 1000 million of damage or 1 billion damage with barbarians or with any of the class? So over here, I do want to remind you guys, during the making of this video, we do not have the Avatar of the ready out. So the new content is not out, but we're anticipating and also preparing how to insert the new glyph. And if my calculations are correct, I'm, I'm sure you guys can do the calculations as well, you can get over 40 times more damage just having this glyph, because this will provide over 4,000% increased damage at the maximum level. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get this glyph to the maximum level right away, but likely it will do at least 3, 4, or even 10 times more damage as you level up this glyph to level 20, to level 50, or even to level 100. And if you guys remember our previous builds, I was able to do about 450 million damage using the new unique rings without any buffs. So with the latest you know, glyphs, we can definitely deal a lot of damage. Now, during the recording again, guys, I'm not able to have the new content available yet, but I have prepared for you guys two different cliff board. So coming over to the first cliff board, in this particular cliff board, we'll be using the unique rings. So we'll be using the ring of red fur. And while using this particular unique ring, we'll be gaining fury through berserk. And you can see that during my alternative builds over here, you can see this is my initial setup to deal the most damage as a single solo player to push for higher content. So briefly going through the Paragons of Choice, we have decided to place the Paragon board for the new unique glyph onto the side which will be getting close damage reduction and also increase of berserk damage, which is very powerful for this particular glyph which will enhance the power of the rear knots. Now after that, what you can notice is I have opted to gain all the damage glyphs that is available for the bad brain, including increase of overpower damage, and here we'll be increasing damage with critical strike. After that, we'll be increasing damage with maces and also multiplied overpower damage. And finally, we'll be gaining more berserk damage. So together with all five of those glyphs, I'm not using the shout glyph, and this allows me to deal tremendous damage with the barbarians with the highest multiplier. And this, of course, will be one of the best solo barbarian build to push for, you know, tier 25 and to the highest levels with the Avatar of Zer for the end game. And of course, guys, I can promise you, you can easily deal over 1 billion damage using the higher level of this cliff. And then it's just about surviving. So on the topic of surviving the high content, I do have a build that was posted a few days ago. And this is a defensive build I want to share with you guys. I have made some slight adjustments now, and I'll be updating this build to provide you guys with the adjustments. So here I have decided to make my boots more stronger with resistance. 
and previously I was getting more fuel reductions and also burst exaggeration. I realized I just need to be defensive and as long as I don't die, it's all good. And in terms of amulet, yes, this is one of the best defensive amulet and also provide us with tons of damage. Now for the case you guys don't have the uber amulet, you can go for a defensive amulet and to craft one of the defensive aspects like the disobedience onto the amulet and going for any of the close damage reduction, armor, and also fortified damage reduction, range damage reduction is also really good. So what I recommend playing solo is that you'll be using a variety of the barbarian build that including using the melted heart of sigil and also switching into the overpower amulet with a banished lord. Other than that, you can consider dealing more damage with your rings and here one of the rings is to gain more resource while my other rate is to deal more overpower damage. Similarly, I can deal tons of more damage by switching my chest, but this will make you a little vulnerable. So notice that this chest deals like, you know, a lot of percentage of more damage, while this chest is very defensive. So I have a variety of gears prepared, and depending on the level of the content I'm facing, and also whether I'm trying to speed clear, whether I'm out of time, and whether I want to be defensive, I'll be switching between those four gears and sometimes I just want defensive against elements. Other times I want more berserk and also I want more damage reduction to close enemies. So this is the first variation of the build, which will be the solo barbarian pushing build that will be one of the strongest, I believe, to go for higher content. Now the next question is, hey, what if you want to play with your friend? Or what if you want to go with the traditional route with the bold chieftain and also the short reduction to cooldowns? Well, compared to the previous build, if you have a look at the new glyphs I have made, one of the biggest adjustments is for the particular you know, build with the shouts. You really do want the short cooldown reduction glyph, because the lower cooldowns you have, the stronger you become, and you really want to get those cooldowns as low as you can. But because of that, you will be missing one particular glyph slot to deal more damage. So to compensate for the lack of damage, but having more shots cooldowns and also more frequency of the shots, I would prefer to go in a party to use my shots, which allows me to still gain constantly fury and also still to be able to you know, do more damage and also still able to be more defensive. Notice that my ranged affixes are not the perfect road affixes because during a party I will be focusing on more defensiveness and then I will be going for more damage whenever I can while I'm surviving in the party. So yes guys, I'll have the second variation of the builds and also adjustments of the builds available for you guys to show you guys how you can play in a party or if you just want to play the shout build over the Berserk Gaining Fury build with a new unique ring. Both of the builds are very potent and also very powerful and this is why during the recording you can see me switching different gears try to demonstrate using those two rings. But I did make a small mistake. While I was switching the gears, notice it was only switching the bottom ring. It did not switch the top ring because I was in a rush. So if that was the case, I would have lost a lot of fury gain. And that's what you saw in the recordings. I was missing a bit of fury in the end of the run. But nevertheless, guys, the shout build will work. And I have the links provided to you guys to show you guys the variation of the shout build using those particular glyphs. And this will allow you to gain the most damage while having the new unique glyph and obtaining the short reduction to cooldowns. So what I have let go is I have let go the about 460% overpower damage and by sacrificing overpower glyph. I have determined that the increase of maze damage and that's the 30% multiplier to the overpower damage was more significant compared to just overpower damage. And this is a test run I did it myself. So I won't show you guys the testing, but I do believe you do a slight more damage by keeping this glyph and while by removing this particular glyph. So this is a glyph, the glyph of Dominate is replaced for the shot build into the legendary or the unique glyphs over here. Now, finally, guys, for the off chance that you find yourself not doing a lot of damage and not killing enemies in one or two shots, you don't have to go with the axe over here. I have also made a sword which allows me to deal more critical damage and while getting more benefits just like my axe. So here I'll show you guys the difference over here. The axe will provide me 42% increased damage to healthy enemies, while the sword, if I put this on, I will be gaining about 200, how much? 200% 200 more critical strike damage. So having a sword means you always deal more critical damage. 
while having the axe means that I will be dealing more damage in terms of one-shotting or two-shotting enemies. So this is the trade-off, and you should be aware that if you're not one-shotting or two-shotting enemies, you come back to the sword to deal more damage because having the grandfather is so much stronger and also the ring that multiplies more critical strike damage. Now, briefly going through the skill rotations of my two builds variations, it is a little harder to find both of them, but I can go through with you guys quite easily. If you're going with a shots reduction build, then you can cast your shots freely because you tend to have lower cooldowns. But if you're going with the Berserk and Fury build, your shots will have longer cooldowns as you can see over here. And this is when you want to use your shots more sparingly. You want to keep at least one shot ready on cooldown to be casted if you're in danger. And if you don't, you might be running out of resource like Fury because that is your defensive resource as well. Now in terms of most of the fights, both builds will do a lot of damage. And if you do find yourself to be at risk of dying, I recommend switching back into the defensive gears. While if you find yourself dealing a lot of, you know, not dealing enough damage and the time is running out, you go back to the offensive gears. You always start with the amulet and then you go through the reins and then can go through the boots as I showed in the video. Now because most of you guys who play the barbarian would pretty much know the rotation of the barbarians, it, it is pretty straightforward. You do want to long strike into enemies because this will provide you with bleeding as you hit onto enemies that you know, critical strikes into 1.5 seconds of berserk. And what you also want to do is, before slaying the final boss or the elites, you want to have yourself spending 300 fury with the overpower ring, because this will allow you just pretty much one shot the end elite or the end boss that is available in any of the content. And even not having the right rings here, I was able to most you know, one shot most of the content. And this means taking a bit of practice and knowing what is the right combination for you will save you so much more time and make you so much safer in any of the end game runs. So what I do now is I'll provide you guys with this testing replay of me constantly switching different gears and you can kind of see the mind th thought behind it. During the time I didn't switch the cooldown reduction gears correctly because I was switching them too quickly and one of the rings wasn't correct. But majority of the time, you can see that we don't have any problem with tier 100. And once we deal higher damage, we'll adjust for more defensive builds to go for higher tier content in the later stage of the game.
must wait. Wait. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed, it is a really good time to do so because I'll be covering tons of Diablo 4 related topics and also videos and also guides. We'll be looking into the top meta builds, no meta builds, leveling up, and also Paragon tricks. We'll also look into the latest events and also official updates and also changes to different characters and also different builds in the game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification on because a lot of you who are watching the videos have not subscribed. You can see 80% of the viewers who are watching our videos have not subscribed, so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest update for Diablo 4.